In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the process involved to set up a new part in Aspire, then import a piece of 3D clip art, size and position it, and create rough, finish, and cut out toolpaths on it. There is a companion tutorial to this that shows the same example but explains each of the steps in much more detail. So I'd recommend that you may want to start by watching this and then if you'd like to learn the steps of the process, watching the expanded version. Let's start now by opening a new copy of the software. So let's begin by clicking on the option to create a new file. I'm going to set up our job to be 10 inches by 10 inches, 3 quarters of an inch thick. We're going to work with Z0 off the top of the block and XY0 in the lower left hand corner. Set it to inches and for our model we're going to set just a standard resolution and come down and hit OK. I'm going to start by importing the 3D object, so I'm going to come down to the modeling tab, I'm going to come up, click on the icon to import a component, and within the project folder I'm going to select the component here which is a piece of the clip art that comes with Aspire. It's actually a 3D clip file which is a native Aspire file, but you can see we can import a number of other 3D file formats into the software to create a 3D component. When we hit open, we're going to see a grayscale preview in the 2D view of the object we've imported. And I can see that's currently at the 0, 0 position. So I'm going to come over, click on the align selected objects, and choose the option to center that in the middle of our part, both horizontally and vertically, and hit close. Now what I want to do is see both the 2D and the 3D view simultaneously. So I'm going to click on the icon here to tile windows vertically. Next I'd like to edit the size and orientation of our 3D component. I'm going to come over and click on the icon to set selected object size. Make sure the anchor is set in the center. Change the width to 9 and because this is set to link that will automatically scale the height. We can hit apply so we can update the model. Close. Next I'd also like to mirror this. I'm going to click on mirror selected objects. I'm going to make sure these two options are not checked and I'm going to click on the button to flip horizontal. So now it's in the opposite direction horizontally. And finally, we're going to rotate it a little. We'll click Rotate Selected Objects, anchor in the center, and we'll rotate that around 5 degrees, again hitting Apply so that we update the model, and then we can hit Close on that form. The last thing that I want to edit on this, before we get ready to start the toolpaths, is to change the height of the model. At the moment we can see we've just taken the default height that this has been set to as it's been imported and scaled up. Now though what I want to do is come up and set a specific value. So I'm going to click on the icon to scale Z height of model. And within here I'm going to click on the button to set exact height. And I'm going to enter a value of 0.55 inches. So that'll just scale up the height of the model slightly. Hit close and OK. We have one last job before we're ready to start calculating the toolpaths, and that's to create a boundary vector around the outside of our object. So we make sure it's selected. I'm going to come up, click on the icon to create vector boundary, and then we can see if I just deselect that and click on the edge that we've generated a vector that follows the outline of the grayscale preview, and therefore the outline of the boundary of our part. This boundary is very important because it's going to govern the area that we create the toolpath in. Now we're ready to go over to the Toolpath tab and start creating our data for machining. So I'm going to click on the icon here to switch to Toolpath tab. That'll hide the Design tabs and on the right hand side it'll open up the Toolpath tab for me where I have access to check my material and go ahead and choose the Toolpath strategies that we're going to use. So before we calculate a Toolpath we always double check our material settings. So I'm going to click on the Set button here I'm going to check the values we've got Z0 off the top of the block, thickness of the material 3 quarters of an inch, XY0 in the lower left hand corner. So if I'm happy with all that we can come down to the next section where we're looking at how the size of our model, the height of our model, relates to the thickness of the material. We have a piece of material which is 3 quarters of an inch thick and a model which is 0.55 inches thick. So I have 0.2 of an inches to play with that I can either position above the model in the material or below the model. We can use a slider or I can enter a value. In this case I'm going to enter a gap above of 0.05. Here you can see that indicated by the dark brown. 
then the light brown is my 3D model and the dark brown below is extra material that will be below the model that we can use to do our cutout toolpath around. At the base of our material setup form we can specify our rapid gaps and our home position. Once I'm happy with all that I can hit OK and it's very important to make sure that information is correct because that's how you're going to relate the part on the CNC to the part you're setting up within the software here. Now we're ready to calculate our first toolpath. In this case we're going to do a 3D roughing to hog out the majority of the material around our flower. I need to make sure my vector is selected because we're going to use that as a boundary for the toolpath. Click on the 3D roughing icon. Here I'm going to select a quarter inch end mill to do this. I'm going to add a small skin over the model, which is the machining allowance, to leave us some material to finish. I'm going to do a Z-level strategy, raster X. I'm going to add a boundary vector offset of 0.18 of an inch to ensure that the tool can roll down the sides of the part and make sure that we machine around the edges. In here we'll change the name of the toolpath to something appropriate, hit calculate, and there in the 3D view we can see our toolpath being displayed and the software has automatically opened the preview toolpath menu. Within here I can click on the button to preview selected toolpath and that will animate the tool through the virtual piece of material showing exactly what we should have left after we run this toolpath on the CNC. The main thing with this is just to check that you're happy with how that looks and that you believe it's removed enough material to make it safe for you to go in with your finishing tool. If I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit close. I'm going to make sure my vector is still selected. I'm going to choose the icon to do a finishing toolpath. I click on this. I'm going to hit select from the tool database. I'm going to choose a 1 8 inch ball nose and go ahead and hit OK. Within here, if I want, I can hit the edit button and we can override the settings for this particular toolpath. So I'm going to change that to be a faster feed rate. Well, imagine we're cutting material that's soft enough for that to be safe. I'm going to choose the raster option for the pattern that we're going to use to cut it and enter a value of 0 0.08 for the boundary vector offset. Again, this is just going to enlarge this boundary vector we've got selected to allow the finishing tool to roll down the sides of the model and make sure they get machined. Again, we can change the toolpath name, hit calculate. In a few seconds, the software shows me the toolpath in the 3D view. But more importantly, I can click on the button to preview that toolpath and see exactly what that's going to give me once I machine the part with that particular size of tool and based on the parameters I've entered for that toolpath. Again, I need to look carefully at that and make sure I'm happy with the finish and the detail I'm getting. If I am, then we can hit close on the preview Again, make sure I've still got this vector selected, and now I'm going to choose a 2D profile toolpath. I'm going to ask the software to cut all the way through the material, 0.75 of an inch. I'm going to select a 1 8 inch end mill to make sure I get in tight into these corners. I'm going to cut outside the vector. I'm going to go ahead and change the name again. And hit calculate. Now we can see that profile toolpath. And now I can click on the button to preview selected toolpath. If I want, I can remove the waste material by double clicking on it. We can maximize the 3D view and take a look at what should be a really good representation of the part we're actually going to cut on the machine. If we were happy with the way that looks, we can close the preview. I can select the toolpaths in order, click on the icon to save them choose the appropriate post processor to format them for my machine or my control software, click on the save button and output each of those toolpaths separately to create the data that we can transfer across to the machine to actually cut this part that you can see here. Let's go ahead and hit close on the save toolpaths menu there. One other thing to show you before we finish is we do have this icon here where we can get a summary of the toolpaths and see an estimated time for each of those that it's going to take to cut it. And this is just based on the feeds and speeds that we've entered. And what you'd actually find is you'd want to machine it and time it and then possibly adjust the scale factor down the bottom to make the estimate more accurate. We can see here though, roughly, the software thinks it's going to take around two hours to cut this part. But as I say, that could be much less or more depending on your particular machine and the speeds and feeds that you can run it at to do carving. Let's just go ahead and close this now. And at this point, 
we've pretty much finished this example and we could just go ahead and save the file and keep that for another time if we wanted to open it and review it later. You will find a copy of this file in the project folder for this example. So that concludes this overview of importing a 3D part into Aspire, resizing it and calculating rough, finish and cutout toolpaths on it. There is a longer version of this tutorial you can watch which includes the same steps but explains them in much more detail. And that concludes this video.